Hello and welcome to section 1, Python and Anaconda Introduction, brought to you by Agionics. The goals for this section will include Installing Anaconda We'll access and create a Jupyter Notebook And we'll instant introduce some applications of the Python programming language. So with that, let's go ahead and get started with section 1.1. The first question we're going to pose here is, what is Python? When we think about Python, we want to think about an incredibly versatile programming language. Regardless of what application you're looking to use it for, there's a good chance Python has already been applied in that way. You could find some great tutorials, you could find some great skill sets, and again, always discovering new ways to utilize this language. Some of these that we see are, again, just in general programming, optimizing any type of workflow on your end, in the field of data science, application development, and more. So whether you're building web applications, working on some web scraping, or if you're building a GUI to run locally to optimize a workflow internally, Python has a solution for you. Why should we choose Python? It's easy to install first off, and it's free. It's a very readable language. If, any, if you have studied any other languages of computer programming, there's a good chance you realize there's a lot of syntax to them. Python is known as one of the least syntax heavy languages. Um, chances are, if you've done any form of programming, you could pick up a set of Python code and get the general idea of what's going on. That's not to say there aren't intricacies to the language and it's not beneficial to study and you know keep active notes and building your repository. However, it's something that once you learn how to read it, it's really easy to understand even more complex statements. Also, there's countless libraries. So one of the great things about Python is once you learn the basics, you'll realize that a lot of time that you could spend writing programs, there's already a library for that, meaning that people have already written these different classes and definitions and functions that accomplish the goals we want to achieve. We'll see some of those throughout this course, as well as build some programs for ourselves. There are some alternatives to Python. Think of C in all its variations. You have Java, JavaScript, Ruby, and Perl. So again, they are out there. However, hopefully by the end of this course, you'll see that Python has some significant advantages over the competition. So once we've gotten through this, hopefully now you're feeling a little bit more comfortable about maybe why we want to work with Python or what some of the ways it can build into your career or your personal goals. In our next section, we'll go ahead and get our environment set up, our IDE, so that we can get Anaconda locally installed and utilize Jupyter Notebook to actually start getting some coding going. That concludes our video. I look forward to continuing our learning in the next lesson. We can cut right to the chase in this section if you want to go ahead and go, uh, navigate to this website. So https colon slash slash www.anaconda.com slash. That I'm going to do the same and we can walk through how to install this locally so that we can run everything that we need to. So I'm going to go ahead and get that open in Google Chrome if you'd like to do the same. Okay, so this is where you should be at. So I'm assuming you guys have this open, so I can go ahead and start walking us through the install. Now, there are some different versions of Anaconda, but what we're going to work with here is the free version. So if you'd like to learn more about Anaconda, you can feel free to read through, see some of the companies and big-time industry leaders that utilize this. Um, this is going to be kind of our go-to, though, for the rest of this course. So there are alternatives to Anaconda. However, in terms of local install and usability, this is a great option. So let's go ahead and go to products, and we want this one right here where it says individual edition. So what's great about the individual edition? Um, first off, it's free. You can also see here that it supports both Python and R. So if you are someone who finds yourself switching between languages pretty often, this is pretty cool. Um, it's a great, very user-friendly, very simple product that you can get for free. So let's go ahead and hit download. And then it'll take us to the bottom of the page. So you can choose your operating system here. So again, any of these will work with Anaconda. That's one of the distinct advantages it has over other IDEs is that, again, it works with literally everything. I'm running Windows, so I'm going to go ahead and get this installed here. So choose the appropriate version for yourself. And then I'm going to pause the video now just for the sake of time on your guys' side. Uh, it doesn't seem like it's going to take terribly long, but I just want to, again, make sure so it's installing or it's downloading, I should say, in the bottom left. Okay, so I've got my install done, so I'm going to go ahead and click it.
Hopefully you won't get that pop up. Uh, that's because I have a recording package running right now for this. So anyways, I got this opened up here. This is where you should be. And again, it could be the 32 or 64 bit depending on the system you're running. So let's go ahead and click next. As always, I highly suggest you read through these. However, since I've already done that, I'm going to go ahead and click I agree. Um, again, kind of depends on what you want to do. So if you'd leave it to the fault of just me, depending on what computer you're using or if it's shared, that works fine. And then the destination folder, so it just goes in your C storage location here, and then we are good to go. So I'm going to go ahead and hit next. This one here, again, we just kind of go with the recommended versions here. So I'm just going to go ahead and handle this. So Anaconda 3 is my default Python uh, 3.8. So we'll leave that on there. So basically it's saying if you're going to run something with this, your system will default to using Anaconda 3, which is fine. Or you could uncheck this if you choose to. I always keep it checked as the recommended input there. And then we're going to click install. So I'm going to go ahead and pause mine while it's installing. This may take a few minutes. Okay, great. So it says some completed. So I'm going to go ahead and click next. So if we go ahead and read through this, it's suggesting that you can go ahead and download PyCharm. However, I'm not going to do that right now. Um, again, we'll save that for a different day. Right now, we're just focused on Anaconda. So let's go ahead and click Next. Good. So let's see. Here's our resources. Good, good. Um, you can leave these checked. They're just cool little ways to kind of learn more outside of this course as well. And then what will open up? is our welcome to Anaconda screen here. So what I would suggest doing is if you haven't yet, go ahead and create an account. Um, I already have one, so I'm not gonna do that right now. Let me go ahead and bring that over here. So in this case, if you do wanna set it up, this is a great way just to kinda save things, be able to access cloud resources as well as log in. So you wanna go ahead and do that as well. Um, on my end, I'm gonna go ahead now and open up the local side to it. And we can get going. So if you go ahead and search Anaconda, oh, go ahead and get that open. So we're right here. We are at the Anaconda Navigator, and I'll say Anaconda 3. So you can go ahead and open that up. And it may take a moment. You'll see a couple different windows opening and closing on your screen. And then you'll see it open up here. So if you created your account, you can go ahead and sign in right now to it. Um, there's my account on there, so I'm already signed in. Now. Depending on the computer you're running locally, this may take a few minutes, like, you know, one or two to start up. So again, if it's taking a few seconds, it's okay. You'll also see some uh, like command prompt looking windows, kind of open and close, open and close. That's totally fine. Um, it's a larger program, so sometimes it takes a few seconds to get started. However, you can see here we have a couple of options. So the default things that are installed here, we see we have the command X prompt. So if you read here, we can run a command to X terminal with your current environment from a navigator activate it. So that's kind of a cool little local install there. Jupyter Lab, which is something again we will not cover in this course, but is very useful. We'll be here utilizing Jupyter Notebook, and you can see some of the other things here we have as well. Um, we have Spider, go make that bigger, which is an alternative to Jupyter Notebook. Um, so again, cool localized Python environment. Qt Council, so a GUI that supports inline figures proper. And again, you can kind of see there's all these different options here. We have RStudio, Orange 3, and GlueViz, if these are things you are interested in. Again, but this course, we're going to be focused right here on Jupyter Notebook. So Jupyter Notebook, we have our web-based interactive computing notebook environment. So what's cool about this is it's great to share with others. So that way, when you're working on things, you can collaborate and work together on it. So let's go ahead, and I'm going to click Launch right here under Jupyter Notebook. So what it's going to do, it'll open up to this and you'll see everything you have access to locally. So it opens up to all the different file directories. So what I'm gonna suggest right now is just for the sake of this course, if you have Google Drive, you could do things there. If you have OneDrive, you could do things there. So what's great about Jupyter is the local install, you can access anything you have stored in the cloud as well. So that's a great way to work with it. Um, for the sake of this course though, since I don't know if you guys have those things, I'm just gonna create a local folder here on my desktop. So I'm just going to go ahead and make a new folder. Again, the location of your folder does not matter. I'm just going under the assumption of everyone has a desktop on their computer. So we can save it there. And I'm going to call this just Python Fundamentals. There. 
and I'll call it examples, right? So we have our folder. So I'm gonna go ahead back into here into my browser and you can see Chrome is my default. It may have opened up in a different one for you if you don't have Chrome as your default browser. That's the one I'd suggest it works really well with it. So I'm gonna go here to my desktop. I got Python fundamentals examples, awesome. So I'm gonna go ahead and click there. And then what I'm going to do here is create something. So to do that, I'm gonna to go to new and we see have some options here. So we're gonna be working with a Python three notebook. So let's go ahead and click that and we can see how it looks. So if you've never used Jupyter before, this is the general interface and there is some extensions. If you're a fan of like, you know, dark mode programming, um, you could look up some Chrome extensions for it. However, this is the typical one I like to use. Um, so it's the default. So what I'm gonna do here is give this a title. So we are in section 1.2. So I'm just gonna call it section 1.2. We're very, very new to Python. Again, the assumption of this course is that you've never seen the language before, and that's how we're gonna start this out. So first, let's just do some basic things in here. So let's just get our first ever program running. So chances are, if you've seen a Python tutorial before, you've seen this program be executed, and it's going to be our first ever program. It's called the Hello World program. So first thing we wanna do is when we're taking notes in Python, we use a cool little syntax. So if I wanna code something, but not have it be read as code, we go ahead and put the pound symbol or the hashtag symbol in there. So I could put that up there and say, this is just notes. So what'll happen is I can run this and nothing's literally gonna happen. Basically when we're doing more complicated code, something I always do and you'll see as good practice in any coding language is you comment out your code as best as possible. There's nothing worse than when you spend hours and hours figuring something out and then you try to go back to it and you forgot how you did it. You don't remember what those lines of code mean. I've spent hours writing blocks of code to optimize a data analysis process only to go back to it when I had to do the process again and I forgot how I figured something out. So best practice, always comment out your code, even if you're the only one that's gonna read it because that way if you ever need it again, you're shortening the thinking process, right? You have some notes to go off of. So to execute things in here, what you wanna do is press shift and then enter. So holding shift and then pressing enter is the shortcut to execute lines of code. And we can see here, this is just notes, literally nothing happened. So we see in and there, there is no out. Now, let's try something a little different here. Let's go ahead and type two plus three. So we got two plus three. You'll notice the numbers pop up green and that arithmetic symbol popped up purple. Doing shift enter again, we could see this is my in, so that's referring to the input and then the out. So they're numbered lines here, line two, line two. So we had two plus three and it gave us an out of five. Now, we've executed something cool there. Let's go ahead and get a print statement in here. So to do that, we wanna go ahead and type the word print. You'll notice it highlights in green because that's a key word in Python. So it highlights all those key phrases just like they do numbers in that dark green. Now. When we're working with Python 3, you wanna put things in parentheses when you want them to print out. So let's see how it looks if I print two plus three. I'm gonna do shift enter again. Um, you can also click run up here. Um, I just prefer the keyboard shortcut of shift enter. Now you'll notice it didn't give me an out. So here I have two and two for the output. So when I print something, it displays it without the outside to it. Other things we could do, let's see if we want to work with a string. So say I wanted to print the infamous, the famous, hello world. So if I just type a phrase like hello world and then I run it, you'll notice I get an error. The reason why is because it's not reading this as a word. In order to read things as a word or a string in Python, we can either put double quote marks around it and then I can run it or Python does not really care, it'll use single quote marks, just make sure they match at the beginning and end. So at this point, you've officially executed your own program. The only thing we're gonna do left is just see how we can save it. So it says here we have unsaved changes. So if I wanna click save, you can either use Control S, just as you would in any other program, or just hit the save key up here. So at this point, I'm gonna go ahead and X out of this and let's just practice opening up a file we've already worked with. So I'm gonna get rid of it all. You could exit out of Jupyter if you'd like um, this whole Anaconda Navigator program, but I'm just gonna kind of leave it open for the sake of time. So I'm gonna relaunch Jupyter. And then I stored that file on my desktop. So wherever you put yours, please navigate back. 
and then I'm just gonna go ahead and open it up. So here's my IPYNB. That's the naming acronym here, and we can see it's all the way open. However, you'll notice though that everything is no longer seen as executed. So let's say I had a bunch of dependencies, right? So I had a bunch of code that relied on code down here, or my last line only works if I did these three. When you reopen something, you want to make sure you run it from start to finish again if there's any dependent lines in there, which we'll understand more as we move on. So at this point, we are good in here. Last thing I want to check out before we end this video, so I'm going to exit out of here, is just what this file looks like. So wherever you saved yours, go ahead and open it up. So you'll notice here, it, when we have a notebook inside this folder, it also has these checkpoints. So if you go in there, it basically just shows the different checkpoints that were saved along the way. So any save that you did, it does kind of log that for version control. So if something goes drastically wrong, you can always go back in here and check it out. Okay, so with that, that concludes our video. I look forward to continuing our learning in the next lesson.